Okay, so I would I would just like to, on behalf of UL, just to welcome everybody who's uh, come along to the uh, the live uh, online session today. And um, as uh, Katie was saying, you'll have the opportunity also if you if you miss something, if you would like to go back and uh, look at the recording um, as well. Um, I'm going to. My name is uh, Jean Conacher, and I'm the course director of the BA in Applied Languages, and I'm going to talk to you. Um, for about 15 minutes or so um, about the Applied Languages programme. And uh, then my colleague, Dr. Sasha de Bruyne, will talk to you about uh, uh, European studies. And um, some of the questions that you may have are around um, the differences between the two programmes, why you might want choose one programme over another, and we'll be happy to um, answer those questions. So do feel free to put your questions into the chat and uh, Michelle will keep uh, track of those. We might take um, a minute to ask, uh, to answer any questions quickly about applied languages between the programmes, but it might also be easier for you to uh, take your uh, to take all the questions um, at the end. But do put them into the chat, so that will capture them um, as we go along and you won't forget uh, your questions. So, as I say, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the BA in Applied Languages, LM44. Uh, and it, the program is really designed to uh, develop what we kind of term language professionals. Those are people who really see themselves as languages people who have competence and fluency in two to three languages by the end of their degree and who've developed a specialist knowledge of the societies and cultures, both through um, having studied them at university, but also having spent time living uh, working, studying uh, in those cultures as well. And in applied languages, you will also develop professional knowledge in an area that we know is relevant to language specialists. And I'll talk a little later about where our graduates actually find work. I think an important thing to think about in terms of applied languages is that the entry requirement is a bit higher than the general um, entry requirements, say, for example, if you wanted to do language on the BA Arts programme. So for applied languages, you need to have a minimum H3 or equivalent in uh, the leaving certificate in one of the languages which are on offer on the programme. So that's French, Guerga, German, Japanese or Spanish. And just to give you an indication, the points that were required in 2021 to come on to the programme are 429. Now, the points can vary a little bit, but around the 430 mark has been where they have been for um, a number of uh, years. The course structure of applied languages is um, similar uh, to any of the um, programmes that you would join within Arts and Humanities at UL. So it's a four year programme. All the parts that are marked in green are times when you're spending uh, time studying here with us uh, at uh, Limerick. And that is the first three um, uh, semesters. So the first year and a half are spent uh, on campus uh, here. Uh, then you go on a six month uh, work placement and that would be in a company abroad for applied languages, unless obviously you're studying Irish and you decide to spend uh, your time working for a, a company or in a, a government institution or a department where uh, Irish would be actively uh, used. Um, after your second your second year, you then go on a study placement for the first six months of third year, and that will be at a university abroad. And both those uh, work placement and study placements um, are compulsory parts of the programme. Once you have uh, spent your uh, two periods away from uh, UL, you then spend um, another 18 months, so the second half of year three and the whole of fourth year back on uh, campus with us. And just to give you some kind of indication as to what you actually do within one of these um, semesters, I've just kind of pulled out that first semester from year one because I thought that might be the one that would be most interesting to you. So you do language, culture and society of your first language, language, culture, society of your second language. And then we have a, a core applied languages stream. This is the stream which um, uh, really sets, if you like, applied languages um, apart 
and then you have your professional stream and a literature cultural stream. And what I'm going to do for the next few slides is to go through each of those um, elements uh, separately so you see how the programme builds up. So first of all, your language A and language B, which languages can you study on applied languages? Well, the first thing is that you must do a minimum of two languages and at least one of those must be at advanced level. By advanced level, we mean essentially post leaving certificate level. So it might well be the language that you have uh, come uh, onto the programme for, that you had the minimum requirements for. Um, but you may have done two languages, at, uh, two foreign languages at school, or you may wish to do Irish and German, Irish and Spanish or whatever. Um, so at least one must be at advanced level. And you also have the option to study three languages to do degree level. And this is something which really um, sets uh, the uh, LM44 apart from the other programmes in uh, Limerick. But also um, it's still quite unusual across Ireland uh, that you would be able to do that. And within the language modules, you have great opportunities to develop a broad range of skills, but particularly moving towards a translation and an introduction to interpreting in your fourth year. I think at this point it's worth saying that uh, one of the distinctive things about uh, the way in which we uh, teach languages at uh, UL is that you can expect to be using your target language all the time. We teach through French, we teach through German, through Japanese, through Spanish and so on. You will be using your languages every day both inside the classroom um, and outside, we provide lots of um, other supports for you to really engage with your languages. In the table at the bottom, I've outlined uh, wh what levels that uh, you can do the different languages at. The thing to note is that French and Irish are only available at advanced level, post leaving certificate level, and all the others are available uh, both at advanced level and at beginner's level. And it's important in terms of beginner's level that you understand and you don't really worry um, about not really knowing very much. It really is complete beginners. I, I'm a German lecturer. I always say to people that beginners level is for people who don't know that the German for hello is hello. So it's as uh, it's as it's as basic as that right back at the beginning. The second element uh, that you have after you've done your two, you have your two languages is the core applied languages stream. And that runs all the way through um, your four years. So and it starts off with an introduction uh, to linguistics and looking in particular at sociolinguistics. That's the position of and the role of languages in society, how we use languages um, and the power that languages have, the things that we can do with languages to persuade people um, about that our opinion is the best opinion. Um, it's about looking at the role of language in the media and uh, so on. And it also helps you to develop a scaffolding, if you like, for your different uh, languages. So we talk about how uh, languages are described, how languages are interrelated and so on. In your second year, um, we have a module in language technology, and that is a, a way of looking at how you might Le better learn languages using technology, how we might research language uh, using uh, technology and so on. And that is a that's the module that you do before you go out on work placement. So that can be uh, quite useful for you. When you come back from Erasmus, you have a research methodologies module and that will help you define a research project, which you will then go on and uh, carry out over your for the fourth year. And you'll have a, a lecturer who's helping you, who's supervising you with uh, that uh, module. And that will be really a brilliant opportunity for you to develop uh, a, an interest in a particular area of uh, language study or cultural study and to really go into depth um, exploring something uh, that is of particular interest to you. So everybody will be doing a different uh, uh, project depending on their own interests. Then the professional stream is this opportunity for you to, to do some uh, uh, modules in an area where we know that this will be of particular interest to uh, linguists, either from the point of view that it might be an area that they might move into or that it develops the vocabulary and the understanding of an area which you might then go on to use as a translator or uh, interpreter. Um, 
you have the option here to do a third language and really have your you develop yourself as a, a multilingual uh, language professional. Or you might do politics and international relations, or you might do marketing. And I've given you a kind of an indication of the areas that would be covered uh, there. And you can take that professional stream all the way through the four years. Or when you come back from your time abroad, you might decide that you want to swap that elective. Um, so you might decide that you've done enough politics and international relations and that you want to take up something new. And there are two short electives for years three and four. And those are teaching English to speakers of other languages or technical writing. And technical writing is about the writing of documentation for the um, software industry in particular, but it's also increasingly about writing uh, for the uh, for the web, uh, for gaming and so on. All sorts of um, opportunities, great for developing uh, your skills in English, uh, I'd have to say. I think it's sometimes a bit of a revelation to students that they can, on a languages programme that's focused on other languages, they can also uh, learn a lot about English as well. The, lit the fifth um, course or the fifth module that you take in the uh, in any of your semesters is a literature and cultural stream. That's where it gives you the opportunity to develop uh, your um, uh, knowledge of literature, culture, film, um, a better understanding perhaps of language and society and so on. And this is an important element if you're considering that you might want to become a teacher. Um, if, you, if you have engaged with the um, information from the Teaching Council at all, you will know that you need to have 60 credits in order to become a teacher of any subject. And this helps you build up the credits uh, that you would need to become a languages teacher. And from applied languages, you can build up the credits to become um, a teacher of two languages uh, within the programme before you then go on to apply to do a professional master's in education after graduation. And that is a, 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 a good opportunity for um, many applied language uh, students. Other students choose to do French literature, German literature and so on as part of the uh, their programme simply to get more access to the language and to find out more about it. Because those modules are also French literature is taught through French, German literature through German um, and so on. I talked a bit about supports that we have around um, and outside the classroom, and I think two of the, the main ones are probably uh, the Language Learning Hub and Shumrun Ogwege, which I'm sure um, uh, Sertia will go on and uh, talk more about. So maybe I'll focus here on the Language Learning Hub. And um, the Language Learning Hub is for people learning um, foreign languages. It's an opportunity, it's a space you can see down on the uh, right hand side, a space with uh, computers and so on where um, students can work away, they can watch films, they can meet other students. We offer discussion groups with native speakers. Those are often our um, exchange students coming in from our partner universities from France, Germany, Japan and so on. Um, and they run discussion groups for our students where they have the opportunity to practice their French and uh, German and so on. And we also offer one to one sessions with native uh, speakers as well. And that can be particularly useful for maybe in the run up to doing oral exams or something uh, like that. There are great opportunities to meet uh, many speakers of the languages uh, that you are uh, going to be studying outside. And we're really trying to encourage you to move from that idea of seeing yourself as a language learner to being a language user, someone who just, you know, in the course of their ordinary uh, day on uh, campus, maybe speaking a bit of French, a bit of German, a, a bit of Irish uh, and so on. I said that a part of what you do is that you do work placements and you go and study abroad and so on. And I've just tried to give you some indications of places that you might go. The first map is the, the map of uh, work placements. And you can see that they're often very focused in and around uh, Europe. And that's because many of you will be doing uh, European languages. But of course, those languages are spoken in other parts of the world. And uh, those of you who saw the um, video with Ashling will have seen that she was out in Argentina. And that is a, a really popular location for students wanting to 
improve their Spanish and it's a great experience for people. Some people go out to the States, you can see that there's a flag there for Japan as well, so there are work opportunities in Japan. Uh, for the study um, abroad or Erasmus uh, placements, again, many of those are focused with our Erasmus partners in European uh, universities. Um, but there are also um, opportunities to study in Japan as well, if Japanese is what you would uh, like to do. Placements are really good for building your uh, broader skills, not just the, the kind of things that you maybe associate with the classroom, um, but also developing your confidence and your independence, your knowledge that you can uh, survive um, in another country uh, through another language. And these are skills that employers really like. Um, the ability to be flexible, to be adaptable, to be creative, to find solutions. These are things that language students are doing every uh, day of the week, whether they're on campus here with us or whether they're abroad. So those are skills that you can really sell uh, to employers and they're great for your personal uh, development. I just picked out some of the things that students have talked about, about where they have been um, on their off-campus periods and you can see the variety of places uh, that people uh, go to and it would be maybe a good thing for you to do if you want to come back and have a look at the presentation later to have another uh, look at uh, this particular slide of uh, where people go and how they, there are opportunities sometimes to extend their placements, stay uh, at a partner university for example for a full year, that's also quite a popular um, option for students. Career opportunities um, as varied as the students that we get coming to join us in the programme. Uh, students typically go into uh, perhaps things like uh, translating and interpreting, they go into teaching, they um, maybe want to continue on with their uh, studies in applied linguistics or intercultural studies. I've just given you a, a sample of the programmes that would be offer, on offer to you if you wanted to continue on at a uh, master's level at UL, but obviously uh, there are similar courses across uh, universities, not just in Ireland, but in other parts of the world. And some people um, even go on to do a PhD and then decide that they want to have a ca an academic uh, career. I think what's interesting is that um, when we ask students um, uh, how useful the programme has been, that um, the research that we have done would say that, you know, a very high percentage of applied language students uh, believe the course has improved their uh, career opportunities. And um, over the last couple of years, I've been uh, working quite closely with graduates um, about what they have actually gone on uh, to do. And these are some of the things that um, they have talked about um, it, it being helpful um, as a programme. So it does open up whole new opportunities um, for people, things they never dreamt of uh, doing, places they never dreamt of uh, living and so on. Gives you direct, direct access to new worlds, new literatures, new cultural experiences. And I think what's particularly important is that it helps you see that there are different ways of viewing the world. So it really encourages you to look at how other people see the world. And when you go to a new culture, you, um, you experience that culture as a kind of an insider outsider. So you have enough of the language and an understanding of the culture to see it partly from the outside, but you bring your own perspective to that. So you can have a critical look um, at uh, other cultures, but also when you return home, it maybe makes you think a bit more carefully about um, your own home culture. Um, it will increase your um, capacity to be comfortable being creative and taking risks. And as I say, these are um, uh, skills that employers um, are looking for. Um, and it does open up great career opportunities for you. And again, I've just listed out a few and you can see that they're very diverse, both in location and in the types of um, things that people might uh, be going on to do. Um, one point is that many of these people have um, found an interest of uh, employment through what they have done on their work placement. And so um, there are um, many examples of students who've done something on their uh, work placement, worked for a company somewhere, where that company has come back to them towards the end of the degree and asked them if they would like to uh, return and work uh, for them full time. 
I think the kind of questions that you should be asking yourself, it's not just about um, uh, whether the course is good, but whether you're the right person uh, for the course as well. And so I think it really is important to think, is are these the kind of uh, questions that you would be answering uh, yes to? So do you enjoy um, meeting new people, communicating in other languages? Um, do you have good language skills already that you want to build on? Would you like that combination of language studies and professional uh, studies? If so, these are the types of uh, 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 questions. If you say yes to those, then the, the BA in Applied Languages uh, might well be for you. Um, one of our uh, recent Applied Language students wrote this in a, in a survey, a kind of an exit survey when she'd finished the programme. And I think it's it's a nice quotation because it applies, I would hope, to all of um, uh, the programmes that we have on offer. It's not just about applied languages. It really, um, students say repeatedly that it is a great place uh, to study. Uh, it's great that they've said all the staff are great, but I think it's really, uh, you know, what, what, what makes us good staff are the students that are in front of us and the learning uh, that they put in. And the last thing, if, if you choose again, she would still uh, pick UL. Um, and that's the best that we can hope for um, when uh, students uh, finish out their uh, degrees. I would very hope, uh, much hope that you would uh, choose uh, UL, that you would choose languages. And obviously for myself, I would very much uh, like that you would uh, choose applied languages. But find the course that is the right course uh, for yourself. Um, I think that that is the course that you will do best at. And it's it's important to be um, uh, to think very carefully about what uh, you would uh, like to study and just go for that and trust trust your judgment. If you have questions about applied languages, I'm more than happy to um, answer any questions that have come up in the chat. But my details are also there if you want to follow up um, at a later uh, stage. And um, I'm going to stop sharing uh, now and just say that if you have any direct questions now, I'm happy to take them and otherwise I'll pass over to Sergio. Don't know, Michelle, you've been looking at the chat whether there's anything in particular I need to answer now. I have Jean. Jean, thank you very much for that informative presentation today. I think you've given a, a great overview of what students can expect from the programme. And as well, it was interesting to hear from past students and their perspectives of the course, as well as future job opportunities. So thank you, Jean. And Jean, we do have one question. Um, one question I've answered, but there's one question um, in the chat from Roisin. Roshin is asking if you wanted to do a literature module for a language that you were doing at a beginner's level. So example, you were doing beginner's Japanese and you wanted to do Japanese literature. Would mm -hmm. that be difficult from your perspective? And would you um, recommend me not to do that? Yeah, what we normally recommend is that it's a good question, Roshin, um, because the option is there within the structure of the programme to do um, uh, beginners uh, to do the literature from beginners level because you're doing two languages what we normally recommend is that in the first half of the program you do the literature modules for your stronger language so maybe the language that you're bringing in from school and then save the literature modules uh, in your beginners language for when you've already done three semesters you've spent six months in the country and you come back in and you can do literature modules in uh, years uh, three and four. OK, so there's nothing to stop you doing the beginners ones um, in year one, but we would normally recommend you to do them in the second half of the programme. And it's not just it's not because it would be much more difficult, but it's just that we we kind of think that once you understand the language and the culture better, you'll get much more out of the literature modules by doing them at that stage in your programme. So hopefully that answers your question, Roshi. That's great. Thanks very much, Jean. And we have another question just coming in now as well okay. from Lena. So I have a question. I am French and I would love to come to University of Limerick. Um, sorry, it's just popping down on me as I read. Okay. And I would love to come to your university during my third year, but I don't know what would be the minimum level of English and what the tests are in terms of requirements. 
Okay. I mean, that would be a question for general admissions. Okay. I'm afraid the, the those are set that those aren't uh, program specific. So um, that would be uh, to check with admissions, I think. And I think Katie is is Katie there. That um, that question will be picked up. Is that right? Generally. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I'm here. Um, typing furiously to other students that are in the live chat, but I see. Yeah. Oh, Lena had a question about coming to the university during third year. Okay. Well, it depends on whether you wish to transfer into the university or whether you wish to come as part of an Erasmus um, exchange program. But either way, you can ask in the live chat that I'm currently in now. It's on the main um, page, and I'll put a link in. Our international team are there as well, so you should definitely ask that question there. And if it's in relation to an exchange, ask your home university's international office and they'll know whether they have an agreement with ourselves and whether it's possible to come here for a, a portion of your own degree. Perfect. So thanks. Yeah, thanks, Katie. That's perfect. OK, Michelle, so I think we could maybe pass thanks. over to Sertia. I'll pick up any questions that come up as they come through. Thank you so much, Jean, much appreciated. And so now I'd like to introduce Dr. Sirka de Bruyne, and Sirka is going to give an overview of um, the BA in European Studies. So over to you, Sirka. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks very much. And uh, thank you very much to, to Jean as well. So I'm just going to share my PowerPoint with everybody and uh, that'll just take me two seconds. No problem. OK, so you can just let me know if you can all see that. Hopefully you can. It is probably just coming up now. Yes, Sorka, we can see your slides now. That's great. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, so thank you very much uh, indeed uh, for inviting me on to talk about the BA in European Studies. Um, and just to say as well that I'm the course director for, for European Studies. I've just taken over since, uh, since September. So uh, on behalf of UL as well, I would like to, to welcome all those that are that are attending this talk. Um, so the code of the course is LM040, and I'm just going to talk through um, just aspects of the course and go into some of the detail uh, surrounding the course. And if people have any questions, they're more than welcome to uh, to, to, to ask to ask me. Um, so the first thing about the BA is that the BA in European Studies is that it's actually UL's longest established uh, humanities degree. It's been around since 1972, which is which is quite a while really. Um, and what it does is it really kind of, I suppose, focuses on knowledge and skills um, that would be necessary to work in Europe, but also in Ireland, to work in a European context in Ireland as well. So it's not just about, say, working in Europe, it's understanding Europe um, from an Irish perspective. So in other words, it would be open to students that might be interested in public service, civil service, private industry. Um, and what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to tell you about the uh, about the program, about the about this this kind of this degree, and about how how broad it is actually, and why in actual fact that is a distinct advantage. Um, in the in 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 the century, in the times that we live in, um, according to all the research that's been done on 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 uh, degrees and where education is going and all that kind of thing, and where professional work is going too. Um, so basically what's entailed here, or what's involved here would be advanced language skills, um, an understanding of the European Union, uh, key EU member states, their histories, societies, uh, economies, political and legal systems. With regard to the points then, in 2020 the points were 369. Uh, this year they went up to 409, so a bit of a difference there. So that gives people an idea of what would be required um, for entry onto the onto the program. Um, we all kind of uh, we all hear a lot about uh, Brexit. That's kind of in the news quite a bit, but that does actually have a huge. It has quite a lot of implications for for European studies, in that. Um, the European Union is affecting it's it's really affecting everything that we're doing in in Ireland it affects every aspect of our of our uh, politics our economy or our education and particularly uh, since since Brexit so that's why it's it's quite an important uh, it's quite an important point with regard to the the program um, the future relationship with the EU and the Anglophone world in other words the English speaking world is in the final stages of negotiation as you know but uh, European studies offers challenges um, to or it offers offers opportunities to us with regard to uh, with regard to uh, the European Union and working in the European Union. Um, I think probably as well that Ireland is developing closer ties with um, with other EU member states, and for that reason, 
European Studies programme here is of particular of, is of particular importance, and that's probably going to increase uh, the more time goes by. Um, languages uh, languages are part and parcel of the uh, of the programme. Um, as you probably all know, there are 24 languages, official languages in, in the EU, um, and some of the largest native speaker communities uh, post Brexit would be, say, for example, German, uh, Italian, French, etc. Um, What's interesting from the point of view of Irish, and I'm a lecturer in Irish here in the university, is that Ar Irish is now um, an official working language. Well, it will be from the beginning of uh, January 2022. So in other words, there is a, a real importance there with regard to Irish in the European Union as well. Always looking for translators, etc. So languages is an important component of, um, of European studies, but of course it does have additional components as well. And I'll go through some of those now in, in a few moments. Um, there is also though, a rising demand for native and near native speakers of English and Irish as translators and interpreters. Um, and this would be the case particularly with uh, the Irish language. Um, we don't see that changing anytime soon. A prerequisite then for entrance onto the course would be to have excellent competence in at least one other EU language, for example, a H3 uh, language requirement for this course. That will be as I say, a uh, prerequisite to get onto the course. Um, the subjects that one studies, um, well, basically there's a European studies core module. And what that really means is a core module is like a, a course, a central course. So all students would study that. That's where they learn about the European Union. They learn about um, different aspects of the European Union, about policy, about the structure, etc. They also do a language. So they do French, German or Spanish. And then they choose three elective streams. Uh, in other words, three, they just take basically three choices from this list here. Um, so essentially you're studying, you will be studying five courses or five modules, if you like, um, per semester. And the courses, as you can see here, European history, sociology, economics, marketing, politics, law. You can also take European literature and film, say for those who might be more interested in going into the cultural industries. Um, you could also take uh, an additional language here as well, which would be your, your a second language. So I think the fact that we do the languages, we cover the languages, but in actual fact, it's broader than that. There's been a very, a very famous book has been has been written in the last uh, in the last year or so by a researcher called David Epstein. And the book is called Range and it describes it, it covers uh, a huge amount of research that Epstein has done on um, how successful, how the way the world of work is changing and in actual fact, how range and breadth is determining our almost like a criteria for people being successful in their professions. It used to be specialization, but the way the world of work is changing, according to Epstein, it's changing towards a slightly broader degree. And I think European studies fits this model. It is slightly broader. We have the languages, but we also have the addition of these elective streams. As I say, sociology, you can see them there, economics, marketing, politics. There's so many professions that one can go into uh, with that slightly broader range of subjects. But again, it also does leave uh, the door open, I think, for those students that may be interested in uh, the cultural industries or creative industries as well. So it has that distinct advantage. And I'll come back to some of those points as well towards the end of this talk. Um, just looking at the languages again, the language requirement, uh, as I say, it's a H3 at higher level and leaving certificate in a language other than English. Uh, French and Irish are only offered at advanced level at the moment. And the reason for that is that people study Irish and French generally in school. So it's just it's just the way that the, the program has been structured this time around. But uh, German and Spanish um, are offered at advanced and beginners levels, which is a fantastic choice. So when you think about it, uh, you can go in right at the very, very beginning, at the very, very start, which in a way is an it's, it's an advantage too, I think, in that sometimes when you're more motivated at university level, that's the best time to learn uh, these, these these languages. So um, it's it's a really, really good choice, I think. And uh, H3, yeah, that's a high, that's a high mark, but I, it's, it's not the highest mark that one would need to get. So it, it, it means that somebody would have to be proficient and, and very good at a language. Um, humanities and social science subjects. So as part of the program, in-depth study is undertaken of politics, society, European cultures, economics, history and law. Um, and you can see there that there's a huge amount of uh, a huge amount, a huge range of subjects, really. Um, but they're all interrelated in that 
if, for example, somebody wanted to go into the diplomatic corps or if somebody wished to become uh, a civil servant or to go into the European uh, in, 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 in to, to work in Europe, uh, so to speak. These are exactly the type of subjects that would be required. For example, politics, which a lot of students really, really enjoy on European studies. Politics is would be, uh, you know, quite, quite a common and quite a uh, sort of a, a very popular subject on European studies. But these are the sort of subjects that add to one's depth and knowledge of uh, the European Union and of the structures and the culture and the policy. So you can see that on this course, we don't just come at it from the point of view of language. We're coming at it from the point of view of culture, from the point of view of economy, from the marketing point of view as well, from the point of view of society, politics, and from the legal uh, perspective as well. Um, there is also, of course, an emphasis on European, uh, the European Union affairs and, and perspectives too. Um, but increasingly that's including also the experience of uh, countries that have been colonized by Europe. So as I say, these are things that evolve, these perspectives uh, evolve all the time, as does any any program, any course. Um, there's also an opportunity, a wonderful opportunity to specialize in the final year. And that specialization entails, um, that means that somebody could actually do a, a European studies specialization. And again, that might be preparation for, again, a profession or a career, perhaps in uh, the diplomatic service, um, or that kind of thing. Uh, again, civil service here in Ireland. So it's not just confined to Europe, and I think it's important to make that point. It isn't, uh, uh, this European studies programme is not just about, say, those who wish to go and live in Europe, although that could certainly be an option, but it's about uh, those who wish to maybe live in Ireland, um, but perhaps work in an area where a knowledge, an in-depth knowledge of Europe in terms of policy, law, language, culture, society, etc., will be distinct advantage. So you can see that that would cover a huge amount of a huge amount of ground, really. Um, as I've said, there is absolutely a wide range of modules to choose from. And it's actually one of the things that we pride ourselves on in the course. This is our unique selling point. The fact that it, it is there, there is this wide range of, of modules. And one of the reasons that that has that we that it's been kept like that, that that's actually been developed is because of the changing uh, nature of work. The fact that as I say, as that book that I that I referenced earlier, that specialisation is uh, not as it seemed to be not maybe something that's going to come about in the in 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 the or that it's not going to be something that's going to be as common in the future, and uh, maybe when, for example, some of the people that are at at this talk, as it was in the past, and we can see that happening already in terms of even people having several different several different careers throughout their working lives, and this is exactly why this wide range of modules has been retained exactly as it is. Uh, for that very, very reason, because that is, according to some of the best researchers that are out there on the nature of work, that is the way work is going and professional life is going. This idea of range, the idea of breadth, as opposed to a very, very narrow specialisation. Um, so the core modules then, which I've, I've mentioned already, uh, starting off with European studies, the global perspective, and of course that is becoming increasingly important. We can see it at every single level. We can even see it the way this week in the news, we heard all about COP26. These are exactly, these are precisely the kind of things that will be covered. Uh, as part of European studies, or that might be touched on. They might not necessarily be studied, but they would be touched on because they're affecting all our lives. So it's a programme that is very much of the moment of its time. Um, there's a European Studies workshop then in the second semester, and you might see the, the words there, uh, AS, that's the, 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 that means the autumn semester, and then SS is the spring semester. Year two, autumn semester, you've got comparative European politics. Um, and then I think Jean just referenced there earlier on about what happens in the second part, in the second semester of year two. This is when the fun starts. This is when people uh, and students get their opportunity to go abroad uh, on their Erasmus. And then they also get, uh, in third year, they get the opportunity to do uh, what's called a co-op. A co-op or cooperative education is just another term for work experience. And these are absolutely superb opportunities for any student to get the two in the one year is just it can be the making of people. Um, I mean, it just completely changes students' perspectives about their, their subject, about what they're doing. Um, I frequently get emails from students who are flowing over with <laughs> with, with, with delight and happiness and, and, and all sorts of uh, positive positive uh, uh, feelings and, and thoughts and, and that about what they're doing, about their, their time as as, uh, as Erasmus students are on their on their co-op and that. So it's, it's, it's an absolutely brilliant opportunity altogether. Um, in the third year, spring semester, uh, 
that's when students start preparing for their research project. But again, it's worth thinking about this research project, the research, the final year uh, project is called the FYP. It's worth thinking about that as another opportunity to develop and to build on one's, one's work profile. Um, so what students uh, get in that third year is they get the grounding to enable them to do research. And in a sense, the topic is important, surely, but the most important thing is to research and to educate oneself and to become educated about methodologies, research methodologies, because again, no matter what area one goes into, whether it's the public service uh, or, the, or, the, or the private industry or pri private sector, research is an important part of almost every single job that, that we do, whether it's called that or not. So research methodologies are certainly what we might call transferable skills and that they can be turned into um, and they can be utilised and transferred into professional skills, which is, uh, again, a real positive there. Um, the European Studies project, uh, again, that's the, the project that one does in the final year that takes that takes place in the first semester and in the second semester. Um, and I think it's it's worth mentioning as well that there are a number of prizes that are awarded to uh, to students um, on European Studies. So there's the Edward Moxon Brown Award. That's um, that was only just recently awarded to one of our students. That's for the student that does the best final year project in fourth year and that's a that's a, a, a fantastic thing so it's to encourage uh, young people young students that are perhaps showing signs of maybe uh, ha that have shown signs of excellent research and they may wish to go on and do further research whether it's at ma or phd phd level and there's also an award as well for students uh, with the, the student with the highest ceo points who comes in to the program on european studies just some important features then about the course the european literature and film stream what that does is it deepens the European focus while allowing students to get the necessary credits to um, to be a, uh, to be registered with the Teaching Council in two EU languages. And that's, I think, a very important and it's a very interesting stream, really. Again, this might suit those who either want to, uh, to, to go into teaching or else people, as I say, young people that perhaps wish to uh, further their, their study of film, of creativity um, and so on and so forth. Um, the European Studies Workshop in the spring semester of year one, what that does is it entails the involvement of future employers, field trips and the involvement of incoming uh, Erasmus students. The importance of this, of course, is that it enables students to build up networks and to build up work profiles. And because the course is actually because the program itself is, is quite small, the numbers are quite they're not they're not huge numbers on the on the program. And for that reason, that enables uh, the lecturers and me, the course director, to give quite focused individual attention to um, to the students on the course. And that's a really, really big advantage to students, I believe, when it comes to um, when it comes to applying for jobs, to plan their careers and to thinking ahead. So the Jan Monet European Studies entrance bursary, that's what I just mentioned there a few minutes ago. That's uh, for students with the highest CEO points. It's worth two thousand euro, which is no mean uh, sum, and which can be very, very uh, very, very useful and handy for students when they're starting off uh, in university. So we have these awards, as I say, that make uh, the, the programme quite, quite distinctive as well. Um, just some other points there about the about the course. Uh, the year abroad, um, what's wonderful about the year abroad, and I, I hear positive things about it all the time, as I say, I frequently get emails from students um, waxing lyrical about this aspect of their of their studies. It's academic, but it's also social and Again, all the research shows that social skills, soft skills, they're called really, I suppose, but they're so important to anybody who's planning a career. They're really, really vital. So I suppose when it, it comes to developing your profile, thinking ahead to your career, it's really, really important to think about those skills as well. And this is what the year abroad does. It hones those skills. It, it, it helps and, and supports and encourages people, young people uh, on the programme, young students on the programme to become independent which is so, so important, um, again, to think for themselves, uh, to develop their, their critical thinking skills. Um, so the whole idea of working um, is, is just absolutely invaluable uh, as part of this, this programme. Um, there's a huge range of employers as well. Uh, and again, this is something that students can use on their CVs after the course, um, a wonderful opportunity. Um, again, with regard to Erasmus, 
the study abroad. So you can see there that the it's made up of two different components. First of all, you have the cooperative education work experience, essentially. That's when you get the chance to work with all sorts of different employers in, 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 in many, many different countries. But then there's also the study abroad. So it's a different, it's, 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 it's slightly different. Uh, it's, 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 that takes place in the autumn semester of year three. That's when you study abroad, you study in, in one of over 200 European universities. And that's a huge choice. It's, it's an amazing choice to, 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 to have open to you and to be able to, to do that. So you can imagine some of the universities that students might have the possibility to go to. Um, some of them are very prestigious, perhaps. And again, this enables students to build up networks, um, all of which lead towards uh, a profession, an interesting profession and a, and a fulfilling profession as well. Um, these are just some examples of the Erasmus placements. Austria, uh, Vienna, uh, one of the great cities of Europe, Belgium, Brussels, Gant, Louvain. Louvain, of course, has uh, very important connections with, with, with Ireland going, going a long way back. France as well. Uh, Germany, Spain. So these are the different uh, examples. There's just some examples of where students have gone on their Erasmus or their study abroad placements. Um, examples of co-op or work experience placements. So as I say, there's two elements to this. Um, France, Germany, we can see some of the big companies there. Air France is mentioned in Germany. GmbH is mentioned. Belgium, European Booksellers Federation. Again, you can see that the, the range of choice that's available to students. So, for example, a student that might be more interested in going into business or going into going into in, into law down the road might choose to go into a particular type of company. Somebody else might might choose something else. So, it's it's perfect for for for, for, for from from that point of view. Uh, also, for those who are interested, perhaps perhaps in traveling further afield, there is Argentina in South America. So again, a wonderful experience uh, from that point of view. Um, Students absolutely love this year abroad. They really do. My co-op and Erasmus were the best years of my life and a stage in my life where I grew personally, professionally and academically. And I think that statement kind of encapsulates really what's so important about this. It's not just the academic side of things, of course, is very, very important. But to progress in one's career, uh, those personal skills, those professional skills as well need to be developed. And what this course does, what European Studies does is it develops those three uh, those 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 three aspects of of a student, and that's what we that's what we focus on. Um, you can see some other uh, comments here going on going on co-op to Spain helped me develop a lot as a person. My favorite experience in UL was meeting my boyfriend. <laughs> we met when I was his when I was his orientation guide. It's funny how we met by chance in UL. <laughs> so uh, that's just a, a comment from from a student there on uh, on on how they enjoyed their 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 co-op. Um, the fourth year. Students again have a wide range of choice um, with regard to the modules and the choice doesn't necessarily relate to the subjects that are previously studied, except in the case of language one. So again, that gives people the opportunity, that gives students the opportunity um, by the time they get to fourth year, for example, if they decide, well, they just want to maybe sort of make a slight shift towards one subject, maybe they have they have their eye on maybe some postgraduate studies or, you know, a profession or a career after their degree, they can do that. So that's an advantage, that's a distinct advantage to this course, that flexibility, that it does allow a certain amount of flexibility with regard to the final year. And throughout fourth year, students work on the final year project, that's the research project, um, and this is submitted in week six of the spring semester. The research project is really, really important, and this is something that students um, they, they they love it. It's, it can be it can be difficult, it can be a bit of a challenge, but as with all challenges, it's when somebody is challenged, so that's when they're really, really learning. But the advantage of the, the research project is that it does enable students to use this again in terms of building up a work profile. So, for example, I've had students who have actually got employment uh, out of uh, or on the on, on the back of doing their uh, FYPs in Irish. That's in the Irish language. So it's something that can be sort of turned into not just an academic uh, product, if you want to call it that, are not an academic output, but it can be actually turned into a professional output. And I've seen that happen quite a few, quite a few times and quite a few occasions. So it's great from that point of view. It's a real advantage from that point of view. Um, and the careers, as I say, well, the careers really, I mean, the sky is the limit with careers in uh, European studies because Europe is so ubiquitous because it's everywhere in our lives. 
there is literally nothing that one cannot do with, with, with this course. Or for example, if you wanted to move on and do something else afterwards, if you wanted to do postgrad and make a slight shift or make a slight change, it's a perfect point from which to uh, from which to start. So I've just written down some of the uh, careers there, the public service um, institutions, uh, say local, local government as well, the private sector, uh, language teaching, of course, and just take note as well that admission into PME courses uh, for languages uh, can be uh, that can be done as well as part of this course. But other subjects require additional undergraduate credits in accordance with the Teaching Council regulations. So that's just important to note. And there, of course, is further study as well down the road. Um, any further information, of course, you can you can contact myself. That's my uh, my contact details there. Um, Circa.debrun at ul.ie if you'd like to ask me anything. A um, couple of just maybe general points about European studies. For example, in there are frequently fairs, employment fairs in European studies. So in February, this coming February uh, in 2022, there's actually a big uh, EU studies um, career fair taking place. Now it's taking place online uh, as it happens in 2022, generally takes place in, in situ on site. Um, but for example, uh, UL, we're hoping that UL will be represented there, um, but also it's an opportunity for students to hear about careers in Europe and to hear about careers in, in European studies. So this is something that um, that I do as course director as well. I let students know about career opportunities that are coming up. Um, so I think that's a very important uh, point with regard to this program. Again, it's 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 one of its unique selling points because it's not a very, very big program. Um, I have the Times course director to give people advice or point them in the right direction. And I think that's a that's it. That's a that's a huge uh, plus as well. And I think Jean actually mentioned there earlier, earlier on, we do have there's quite a lot of support for first year students as well. So for those of you maybe that are thinking about starting next year, which is more than likely, um, there is actually a, a student support officer as well. And UL is absolutely brilliant from the point of view of supporting students, as well as being an absolutely wonderful campus uh, to be on, one of the most beautiful surely uh, in Ireland, if not the most beautiful uh, in Ireland, which is which is lovely as well with great sports facilities. It's just a fantastic uh, university from the point of view of the support that it offers its students. And I think that's a very important uh, point as well, particularly for maybe first year students that are perhaps leaving home for the first time and venturing out into the, the big bad world. So um, I hope that's been of some uh, some help to you there in thinking about European studies and you're more than welcome to ask me any questions that you have on the course. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much oh, I have a little bit of feedback. Can you hear me OK? I can, yeah. Oh, yeah, brilliant. I can hear you perfectly. Sure. <laughs> um, Sirka, that was brilliant. A great overview um, and really even to go through the skills that students can obtain from this course. Uh, it really is a long standing course and even the bursaries and awards making it so unique. And you touched upon there as well, the EU careers fair, which is an exciting opportunity. So thank you so much for that overview. Really insightful Not today. Totally. Thanks. And if anybody has any questions, they can uh, they can just pop them into the chat if they want, or if they want to ask me anything about the course or any more details. That's great. Carl had a question coming through. Is it advisable to take up a language from scratch from the beginning on the course? And I know Jean had answered that question on behalf of both of you. So thank you, Jean, for that. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that's as you say, Michelle, Jean, answer that one. But I mean, I, I, I think that's I think taking it up from scratch is no problem. Isn't that right, Jean? Well, absolutely. And it's such a great I, I, I actually in my answer, I referred to what you had been saying about what a great opportunity it is to to start a language just that little bit later when you have different motivations from for doing it. It's very different starting when you've made the decision that you're going to do it rather than that this is the the language that was offer on offer for you in your school so we have really yeah. great experience of motivated people starting languages and ending up really good by the end of um their their studies so um, i would always recommend people to take a I would always recommend people to take up as many languages as they have the opportunity to take up you never know yeah. when you might need another one so 
Exactly, exactly. And uh, I mean, you know, Jean is the, as you know, those of you that are, that are listening, Jean is the course director for Applied Languages. But the Applied Languages uh, here, the way they the way they teach language is absolutely, it's second to none. It's world class. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> as if I'm promoting the Applied Languages, but it really yeah. is. Because I know that some yeah. of the students that will be studying, say, languages, you know, on European studies, they would obviously be attending those, those classes. So the way that languages are taught here in these universities is you know, I'm say a teacher myself. We're in a different school, of course. We're wonderful too. <laughs> the way we teach our subjects as well. But I think I think it is. I think it's a very nice subject here. Um, so that's just to encourage students in in that regard. You know, I've, yeah. So. And we have a question coming in, circa for you from Isaac. Thank you for your question. What careers do people usually get from European studies? Yeah, a lot of them would go into, I suppose, the public service. Um, also, I think perhaps local government, quite a few go into teaching as well. So qu quite a variety of, 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 of careers, really. That's the thing. It's not it's not just one career that people go into, you know, and again, it would, that would depend, Isaac, whether they would go and do sort of more postgraduate studies afterwards. Um, yeah, and so I hope that gives you kind of an idea. You alluded to that in your presentation, yeah. you had the wide array of, of different career paths. Which is brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. And as I say, that that is that is the future of work. I mean, that's that's the way things are kind of pointing and going. So it was probably different in, in well, certainly my parents' day, <laughs> and possibly those that are here, maybe in their parents' day too. Um, but yeah, it's it's change. It's changing quite rapidly. Like the, the world of work is actually changing very very fast, and we have to kind of keep up with it and keep keep abreast with the different changes. So that's as I say, one of the advantages I think of, of of this particular course. But yes, a lot of different people, like a lot of the students, a lot of the graduates would do, they would do quite quite a quite a range of things really, you know. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Thanks for that, um, Circa. And we have another question coming through from Sean. Is it possible to study two languages throughout the entirety of the European Studies course? Two languages? Possible? Um, yes, what you do. Well, I think there, yes, you, you two languages you, you can. You, you take, say, for example, you have your European Studies core module and then you have your first language and then you can. You can do you can do a second language then. Yeah. So you could do that if, if you if you wanted to. So for that means, for example, I'm not really sure. Sorry, what's the, the, the young man's name, Michelle? Sean. Sean. Sean, is it? Yes, I'm not sure what, what language Sean might be thinking about. But for example, a lot of students will be thinking in terms of, say, Irish and the European Union, that kind of thing. So yes, yes, you could do that. Yeah, surely you could do two languages. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Circa, for that. So I don't see any further questions coming through and I just like to remind everyone and there's one more um, from Grace. Grace is asking what is the difference between this course and the one previously discussed? So the difference between your course and Jean's course as course directors. OK, yeah, well, I go first, Jean. <laughs> there, are things, there are things in common, Grace. Uh, certainly the language is one of the things that's obviously in common and you can see there um say for example i think uh with european studies uh you have the option of say taking marketing economics politics whereas you wouldn't have that with um applied languages if i'm if i'm right jane yeah yeah i'm going to i'm, I'm going to answer it maybe slightly differently and say that i okay. think I think I think that what Sergio was saying about the, the the breadth of European studies is really important because even if you do two languages um, on uh, European studies, you're still going to be taking a couple of these other um, um, elements. So you you have a, a much broader range of um, subjects that you can actually take. So in applied languages, you would take your two languages and you would take marketing or politics and international relations or a third language but within European studies you've got the opportunity of doing those languages with sociology um, or with European history and so on those are not those are elements that are not available in applied languages so if those if that broader social science um, uh, focus is of what is of interest to you then I think European studies is the program that you should uh, be looking at um, the, those areas within applied languages are really designed to back up your language studies. So you might go on to become a, 
a translator for the EU and therefore a knowledge of politics and international relations is um, useful for you. Or you might go into um, international marketing. So a combination of languages and marketing is of interest to you. Um, but the people who finish out with European studies often go and work in uh, government. They go and work in um, uh, using their politics in a much in a much um, uh, more immediate way than just having that background knowledge that the applied language uh, student has. So I think it's it's really to do with what your interest is on the the wide range from languages through all the different subjects and the balance between the, the, them. But what Sertia says is right for the languages uh, modules themselves, European studies and applied language students are taught together. So in the language modules, you'll be you'll be doing the same work. So it's really the balance of the programme overall that will help you decide. And you can find out more. I think the other thing is you can find out more information on the websites as well. So go back if you're wanting to compare the, the two programmes, the useful thing is really to look on the university website and look at the information that is provided on the two programmes and just really map them out for yourselves and, and think about what's the most interesting thing um, for you. There's a question there about when European studies started, starts, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I suppose just September 2022 will be the next, will be the next okay. intake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I think maybe we may need to finish up time wise, Michelle, is that right? That's right. Absolutely. I just want to thank both of you. So thanks again to Dr. Jean Conacher and Dr. Sirka de Bruyne for your insightful overviews today. And I'd just like to signal everyone at everyone that the recording will be sent to you via email and also we'll upload the recording once I get it snipped to the website. So you'll be able to review that as well. But please feel free if we didn't get to any of your questions or you might have any questions as an afterthought today, log on to the live chat. I've popped the link into the chat here. We're available right up until 5 p.m. So please do ask your questions and we're happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Jean and Sorka again. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Bye for now. Look forward to seeing you all at UL. Bye-bye now. Bye.